This short video is going to introduce the first moment method. It's a surprisingly useful method in discrete probability. And then at the end, we'll present a couple of examples of the method in use. Okay, so the method is based on Markov's inequality. And Markov's inequality simply says this. If x is a non-negative random variable, then the probability that x is greater than t is less than the expectation of x divided by t. Um, okay, simple statement. It's good to remember the proof, though, because the proof has a little trick that we use again and again in probability in different contexts. So let's prove it. Um, we're going to assume that x is a discrete random variable, just for simplicity, and we're going to write the expectation of x, um, but we're going to break up the sum into two parts. So the expectation of x is the sum over all values uh, less than t of s times the probability x equals s plus the sum over the values uh, greater than t. Okay, and we want to look for a lower bound um, because if you look in, in the Markov's inequality, um, the expectation of x is on the right-hand side and we want a lower bound here. Okay, so this is at least, this first, uh, this first part of the sum, this is, x is non-negative, so all these s's are uh, at least zero. This, sum, this part of the sum is uh, at least zero. Okay. Now, how about this uh, sum? Here we have um, each of these s's are at least t. So we can pull out a t. This is at least t times the sum over s at least t, probability of x equals s. This is exactly t times the probability that x is at least t. Now just divide both sides uh, by t, and we get uh, Markov's inequality. And that's it. Now, for the first moment method, we're going to apply Markov's inequality to a specific case uh, of a counting random variable. So a non-negative integer uh, random variable. It's going to usually be counting the number of times something happens. And we're going to apply Markov's inequality with t equals 1. So the probability x is at least 1 is less than or equal to the expectation of x. The probability x is at least 1 is also the probability x is not equal to 0 for a non-negative integer uh, random variable. Now, um, in particular, often we're going to be talking about a situation where we have some parameter n that goes to infinity, and we can conclude with this inequality that if the expectation of x tends to 0, then the probability that x equals 0 tends to 1. Okay, the probability x doesn't equal 0 tends to 0. Uh, fair enough. Um, and usually, again, x is going to be the counting random variable, the number of some bad events that happen. And we want to show that with high probability, no bad events happen. What we're going to do is show that the expected number of bad events that happen tend to 0. This implies that uh, the probability that no bad events happen tends to 1. Okay, for our first example, we'll um, look at the simple uh, symmetric random walk. So a random walk that starts at zero with probably a half takes a step up, with probably a half takes a step down. Um, and we want to show that with high probability, probably tending to one as n goes to infinity, the uh, random walk does not cross zero at any step between uh, n and n plus n to the one third. Okay, so how do we so, um, again, these bad events are those simple random walk crossing zero. And we're going to uh, let x be the number of times these bad events happen. The number of times the random walk crosses zero between step n and n plus n to the one-third. Okay? And what do we have to do to apply the first moment method? We need to calculate the expectation of x and hope that it tends to zero. So, um, what is the expectation of x in this case? The expectation of x is the sum from, say, k equals n to n plus n to the one-third of the probability that s k equals zero. Here we're using linearity of expectation. Now, um, for all k in this range, uh, this probability is big O of one over root n. And so the expectation of x is big O of there's n to the one-third uh, terms here. Each one is like one over root n. 
Uh, and so what is this? This is, um, this is big O of n to the minus 1 over 6, which tends to 0 as n goes to infinity. And, and that's it. We've shown that the expected number of times the simple random walk crosses in this interval tends to 0 as n goes to infinity. And therefore, applying Markov's inequality, we can conclude that uh, with high probability, uh, the number of times that the simple random walk crosses zero uh, is zero in that interval. And that's it. That's the first moment method. Okay, for the uh, next example, let's say we have n standard normals, normal zero, one random variables, and we want to show that the maximum of these n random variables is less than one plus epsilon times the square root of two log n. Uh, with high probability, probability tending to one as n goes to infinity. Um, okay, so you might say I haven't specified the problem precisely. And that's true. Um, I haven't said how these random variables depend on each other. Um, but as you'll see, for the first moment method, um, dependence is irrelevant. It doesn't come into the uh, calculation. And so this is important. You can apply the first moment method no matter how... Um, events, random variables, depend on each other. Okay, so how do we show this? Um, again, x is going to be the number of random variables greater than 1 plus epsilon squared of 2 log n. Uh, you can sort of guess how this is going to go. We calculate the expectation of x. This is exactly n times the probability a single standard normal is greater than 1 plus epsilon squared of 2 log n. Um, okay, now there's a, a nice tail bound on the normal distribution. The probability x is greater than some t for the normal, I guess I should say z. z is greater than t is less than e to the minus t squared over 2. Um, okay, plugging this in, um, we get something like uh, the expectation of x is less than n times n to the minus 1 plus epsilon, I guess, it's going to be squared. Um, okay, but this tends to zero as n goes to infinity. And therefore, the expected number of random variables of this collection that are greater than this uh, tends to zero. And therefore, with high probability, none of them are greater than this. And in particular, the maximum is less than 1 plus epsilon times square root of 2 log n. Okay, so hopefully you're getting the hang of the first moment method. One final example, um, a balls and bends problem. So we have n bends, buckets, bins, and we're going to throw m balls, uh, each one uniformly and independently at random, into one of the bins. And we want to show that if m is large, greater than 1 plus epsilon n log n, then with high probability, uh, all the bins have at least one ball in them. There are no empty bins. OK, so um, you can guess what happens. X is the number of empty bins. Uh, same thing, uh, expectation of X. This is N. There's N bins times the probability that, let's say, bin 1. They're all the same. Bin 1 is empty. Okay. Probability bin 1 is empty. This is 1 minus 1 over N. The probability the ball doesn't fall in bin 1 raised to the M. And for, uh, for this choice of M, um, nicely enough, this, let's see. So this is N, 1 minus 1 over N to the 1 plus epsilon uh, N log N. And again, almost exactly the same as you've seen before, um, this tends to, is asymptotically the same as N to the minus epsilon, which tends to 0. Um, okay, and then using Markov, we conclude that... Um, with high probability, uh, x equals 0. There are no empty bins. OK, that's great. Um, that's the last example. Um, but here's a question. Um, what if m is 1 minus epsilon m log n? Okay, then the expected number of empty bins, um, this is going to be n to the epsilon tends to infinity, and then we would like to say, well, in that case, there are going to be empty bins. The expected number of empty bins tends to infinity. Can't we just say, okay, therefore, 
there's at least one empty bin with high probability? Um, the answer is no, you can't immediately conclude that, but uh, in some cases you can, but you're going to have to stay tuned for the second moment method in the next video.